Ross, thanks for seeing us today. This company is uh, part of the Naismith Group, Doughty Precision Engineering. We're here to have a look at the Nakamura installations that you've, or machines that you've installed over the, the past decade. But first, before we do that, I'm, I'm very intrigued about this group and the company and how it all works. Tell us a little bit about Doughty Precision Engineering. Okay, so Doughty Precision Engineering was uh, purchased by the Naismith Group in 2005. Uh, it's previously owned by uh, Pete Doughty, family run for 87 years previous to that. Uh, and that's, it was primarily uh, a diesel parts manufacturer back then and then slowly moved into the connector manufacturer for aerospace and you know, that's the foundation we've built on since the, since the group's owned it. So since 2005, how much has this business grown since it's been part of the Naismith Group? Okay, so uh, in 2005 we turned over approximately 1.3 million. Uh, this year uh, our budget is set to be 4.8 million. So we've achieved around 20% growth year on year. I'd like to start here at this machine, Ross, because this is the latest one that landed here. It's yeah. just a few days ago, wasn't it? Yeah, last week. Last week. And this is one of two that you've purchased this year. This is yeah. the WT150 yep. two. This is one of their most popular machines at the uh, of the Nakamura yeah. models. Why is why is this good for you, and what's your expectation from this machine? So the reason that we like the Nak 150 so much is it offers us one hit machining, which is like 100% our ethos for this business. We want to get. Uh, complex components off quickly uh, with good consistency and that's what these machines deliver. And for those people that don't know what this WT150 is, it is a twin spindle, twin turret yeah. turning centre isn't it? It is, yeah. So we can drill and mill on both turrets, we have Y axis on the upper and we can pass over from sub to main so it allows us to complete the parts very efficiently. We're going to have a look at some parts in a minute. Before we do that, th th this, this type of sophistication and this type of machine has played a big part in your, your business's success, hasn't it, over the last decade? It has, yeah. So when the machines originally landed on uh, with Doughty's, they were obviously very popular, but as the technology's moved on, they've actually got even quicker. So our cycle times are reducing and our consistency is improving, and therefore it offers us new uh, opportunities like lights out running and running unmanned. So. You, you mentioned a good point about the technology advancing, software getting better. Some people might say, well, these, these things, I mean, you, you, you look at this control now, the, the, the graphical element, yeah. you know, people might look at these controls and think, if, does it mean there's going to be more problems? Am I going to have issues? And if I do, are they going to be harder to solve if technology is moving that fast? What would your answer be to maybe a critic that said something like that? Um, no, I'd say completely the opposite. Um, if you think of it like your, your car that you drive on the road, it's, you know, the more sensors they have, the better diagnostics they have, the quicker they can resolve problems. Uh, our problems on the new machines are very limited and when they do they're often resolved within a day because the, the diagnostic and the uh, fault find on the machines is very, very quick. And if you looked at the machines that you have uh, from Nakamura, is it, is it eight or nine? Nine. If you looked at the nine machines that you'd got, how, how much have they developed since the first machine to say this one? What's the, what's the improvements, the changes and how much more effective are they for your company? Oh, the changes have been massive over, over the years. If you compare it to some of the older 250s um, that look, you know, extremely slow in comparison to the new machines, it's and also the high pressure coolants really come on. So we run 30 bar of high pressure coolant on these machines, which is which is more than enough for us uh, with the size of component we're doing. But you know, in terms of how they, you know, they actually moved on, it's it's been leaps and bounds. Let's have a look at some of these parts that you've got here, Ross. Yeah, I've got, a, got a few here. They're quite small, so. T tell, let's tell us about this first one, what it is. I'm, I'm also interested about, you mentioned about high pressure coolant. Yeah. That, that normally comes as a result of um, maybe stickier materials, harder materials. What yeah. are you machining and what is, let's talk through these. Okay, so we've got a, basically this is what we call a 3A999 connector. So when it's uh, built up by our customer, this will be a hermetically sealed shell. They'll have gold pins inserted into it and then that's orientated on the five keys. So. The goal for us when we're machining these parts is to get our two turrets, uh, two turrets balanced as much as we can because they can be fr quite front end heavy. So one of the things we've developed is to actually machine all of the rear, including the slots and deburring it on the sub spindle and actually developing woodruff tools that will go in and do all of that. So, And, and that's as a result of the latest machines that you've yeah, had? Yeah, that's from... right, yeah. And how hard are you hitting this part, Ross, as well, when it comes to the, the, the turning diameter, the speed, the, 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 the drilling speed, etc.? Um, externally, we're up around 200 meters a minute. We start to clamp out at about four and a half thousand revs on this part. Uh, internally, we're around the 80 to 100 meters a minute, just vibration dependent on with it being such a small part. But and do you fully deburr this on the machine? Yeah, yeah fully deburred. It comes off as you see here. What sort of tooling do you use to get that deburred? So we actually developed an MEP uh, 
it's basically a metal edge preparation tool with Seco, which allows us to machine the width of this flange and the flange slots all in one go, like a reverse woodruff. So going back in time with a part like this, you, there would have been a lot more intervention. You would have you have had to be involved in the parts um, process much more than you are now. Yeah, and also we weren't able to do as much on the on the lower spindle because we just didn't have the coolant pressures, we didn't have the the tool technology, we didn't have the rigidity in the lathes because it's all fine tolerance work and it's all very very small. And I can see from that you'll be getting the best use out of the Y axis on that part as well. Yeah, absolutely. So the Y axis is critical in maintaining our milled finishes because we have to get these parts off to birds. So keeping birds to a minimum is really important to us. Do you, uh, I want to take one, one part of these at a time. So we'll we stick with this one at the moment. Yeah. Do you get the benefit or do you utilize the, the tool capability of these machines? Because have you not got 48 point or 40, the opportunity to have 48 tools, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, we can load up to 48 tools. Um, we don't need to for these, so it's we don't, but we do make use of double holders. So from rough to finish, we only have to do a half index. So it's very, very quick. We don't need to go home. It's just a half index, which is a good time saving. And tell me about, the, on this particular part, what, what are you chasing tolerance-wise, what, um, and what is it? Uh, so we chase 05 tolerance pretty much all over on this part. Some of them will have special features where we do go down to as little as three tenths or you know, sub 01 on, on back end diameters on these machines. So how long does this part actually take then, Ross? Uh, we get these off in about five minutes 50 complete. Very quick. Okay, pass me that one. Let's move on to component number two. What is this? Again, tell us about the process and how long it takes you and the material, etc. So it's another connector, but of a slightly different family. Uh, these are glass sealed eventually. This material is Inconel X750, which we actually import from the US. Uh, it's a fairly rare Inconel. We used to machine these in multiple ops. So basically, we'd turn a blank, we'd hog most of it out, then we'd finish them off, and then we'd put them on the VMC for finishing. But we actually now get these off complete on the Nakamura's. Uh, including there's actually two 0.8 mil 20 degree angled holes in there which took us quite a while to sort of work out a process to get them in but how are you doing that because there's no b-axis on these so the Nakamura's actually have an option to have an angle driven tool that we can set to any angle that we want between 0 and 90 degrees so we then program it to work in at 20 degrees at 20 degrees is that solution that ETG supported you with from a, from a turnkey perspective? Um, not on this uh, specific part, but we do uh, a number of other families where we have to use the angled hole, uh, and, and that's the solution that they came up with to allow us to get in with um, ball nose tools, etc. Striking me again, is a pretty intricate part with some pretty seriously tight tolerances. Yeah, this is, this is a really tight part, so most of the ODs on here are sub-01, so we, we're talking microns on these parts. On these machines then, going, going back to the, the Nakamura, the changes over the years, I believe the new WT150 has a bigger bar capacity as well, doesn't it? Which, which again can only yeah, be advantageous. Absolutely, so the new machines take a 65 mil bar as opposed to the 50 mil of the, of the older machines, which is a huge advantage to us, because that pretty much covers our entire machining envelope of connectors. So, whereas before we had to have two types of machine, we can now service them all on the 150s. And, on, on the programming side, I mean, something like this, you, you can't be tackling that here at the control, are you? No, we, uh, we do most of our programming offline using uh, Feature Cam, which is uh, now owned by Autodesk. Uh, and with the connectors, we sometimes do some of that offline manually if it's just size changes or a family change. But on a, on a complex part like this, yeah, we use, we use Feature Cam. I always think as well, Ross, with parts like these, there's a lot of complexity to them. Uh, there's a lot of axes moving at once. You're trying to balance the job. Is there any risk of collision? Uh, when you're actually machining? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we try to avoid it where we can uh, with weight codes and, you know, keeping the turrets balanced, but especially on small parts, the turrets get very, very close and also close to the chuck where one of the good things that Nakamura have done is they've actually brought out a new system called Collision Guard, which effectively acts like a braking system should the turret collide, it should detect it and actually, you know, slow everything down in a reasonable fashion to protect any damage from the machine's internals. I can see that being a, a very beneficial feature. It gives you peace of mind, really, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it prevents breakdowns that could last very, several days if we were to damage the actual rails of the machine. So, I think one of the things that's coming across loud and clear from today's visit, Ross, is the fact that the business is trying to move away from having a, a vertical machining centre to do your secondary operations. You want to start investing in the technology that makes the components in one hit. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So we've worked closely with uh, ETG over the years, well, for many years now. 
uh, to you know find machines that are the best fit for us to to encompass the one-hit machining that we that we need really to stay competitive in today's market. And if you're going to maintain this, the kind of growth that you've experienced since 2005, you're going to need guys like this behind you every step of the way, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to be looking to put you know more machines in in the future. So it's you know it's exciting time with the new technology coming out of what they can offer us.